shit, ladies and gentlemen. This is Intergalactic Interviews, and this is episode 116. And guess what? In house today, we have the wonderful, the talented, the on air personality that we all love the most, Mr. Russian Tim from Rocket from Russia, our very good friend for a long, long time, making his return to the show. But before we get into that, folks, I think we should let you know about a fantastic opportunity right now available to you if you're in the lower mainland or in Western Canada, now in Alberta. We'd like to offer you a great, great opportunity to check out Floathouse. That's floathouse.ca. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a podcast promo code for you that you should check out. 20% off your next available float. And actually, right now, until December 31st, 2016, you can get two floats for $89.99. Am I correct? That's correct. Might be 95 I don't know, $89.95, something like that. But $89.90, 90 bucks, folks, for two floats, which is an amazing deal. I think you guys should definitely check it out. If you haven't tried it out before, it's like a spa for your mind. Such a relaxing endeavor. So tranquil. You can probably hear a little bit of the spa music in the background right now as we're going to sip these lovely beers. And that brings me to our next point. But before I get to that point, I just want to remind you about floathouse.ca. So please go to floathouse.ca. Check them out. Let them know you love it. Uh, they probably been... use our podcast promo code. How about that? <laughs> Did I not say it? Nope. Podcast <laughs> promo code is what, Michael Saavedra? That would be II Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely correct. II Podcast, and that gets you no 20... guarantees that that will work on that eighty-nine dollar float that's, offer. But that's right. <laughs> yeah, it does might that work. It, it might... might be one or the other. Yeah, we haven't confirmed I don't know. that. It might. You know, what? you know what? Who knows? They're, Give it a they shot. might be feeling generous here at the float They're house. Cool people. Just make a call. It doesn't cost anything to try. That's right. See what they say. We'll go from there. Uh, it's pretty pretty normal stuff. But uh, I, I think you guys should check it out. I love it. We float. You should float. Try it out. Check it out. And enjoy. And speaking of enjoy, we are very, 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 very blessed and very thankful that we have Off of the Rails. Berries. Lots of berries. Off the Rail Brewing Company is actually sponsoring this episode. And uh, as you can see, we have a lovely... Uh, le- you know what? Actually... Savedra, you're the knowledge of all this. What are we drinking today? Uh, today we are sipping back on some uh, Checkmate Pilsner. You know, wanted to go nice and easy today. And if you're looking for a beer this holiday season, I believe you should drink up some Checkmate Pilsner. Mm. Available in all BC liquor Checkmate. stores. Oh, I love it. We had Checkmate before, right? Yes. Yeah, this stuff is really good. And if you're in uh, East Van, why not check out the brewery? Get a growler oh. fill. Get a couple growler fills. They have... Over 15 different beers on uh, on Growler Fill uh, lists They're at rad, various times. This is great. Super good. Fantastic. They, they gave us this... Uh, Canadian award-winning beer, this beer. Yeah, they gave us these nice glasses, too. I love it. Um, I think we're going to go live on Facebook. What, do you want to fucking go in on that? Uh, I think we should do that. Russian Tim's going to help us out. You guys are going to share it up while we get this going, and I'll chat for a second. Um, if we're going live... Which I think we are right now, going live on the interwebs with Facebooks, uh, with Rush and Tim. I should probably bring up the fact that uh, very recently, as of this weekend, actually, we just had a very successful show. You were uh, of sound body and mind when you asked us to co-sponsor it as media sponsors. And uh, we were very happy. You talked to me the night before and you were like a little concerned that numbers weren't going to be up because of the weather and i i assured you that before you even put out the first flyer that this was going to sell out and here we are and that's exactly what happened it was the packed house top to bottom every act was amazing curated by yourself russian tim please speak up now and let the world know how you feel about that show Cool. No, thank you so much. Thanks. First of all, thanks. Hello to everybody, and thanks for great <laughs> beverages. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Oh, off the rail brewing company giving us some excellent drinks. No, Look, that. Look at that. Off the rail. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, man. So we wait. Started, the first time I came in, I brought beers. Second time, we didn't do any alcohol. This is my third comeback. It's a hat trick of intergalactic interviews, and now you're feeding me beer. A beer from someone else that was very generous. That's even better. A third party beer. That's mm-hmm. it. Uh, can can you hear uh, Russian Tim okay on that? Let's push this towards you, brother. Oh, You're a professional. So yeah. You fucking know. You I'm should. still puzzled how to <laughs> share you thing on uh, on the on the internet so people can. Oh, you're still sharing. Okay, go ahead. How does how does it work? I think you just find the link that. Uh, we just refresh Facebook right now. Like it should uh, pop up with the link. Yeah, and he's very needy tagged. with his Facebook needs. I'm super. Needy. Oh, he, holy shit! Yeah, oh, I see myself. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we're gonna divide by zero here in a second and just collapse the universe. I don't think you're supposed to watch yourself go live. I think that's a problem for sure. Uh, I, I think. Um, 
if we were to talk about the show, though, uh, first of all, let's just run off uh, who was on the show. We had The Greatest Sons. We had The Core. We had You Big Idiot. We had uh, Anthems. We had Contra Code. Look at this. This is all off memory, man. I'm just like going off. We had you uh, were knowledge. there. We had Resolve Records. I was there, and we did sponsor the Fargo. <laughs> but uh, and, and uh, we had actually Resolve thank Re- you so much for that. Oh, pff, our pleasure. Are you kidding me? I, I think that uh, uh, personally, I think what you do for the scene is like so important, and I think. Uh, this was your what third four? How many shows now have you done? Rock from Russia presents, oh, maybe. like live shows, live. No, uh, probably over ten for sure. Ten, yeah. So this year alone, though, you, you, how that many was, did you put on? That was I've done three and a half, I would say. Three, three and a half. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think one doesn't count. Yeah, every no, show. No, I won't count it. I, I was just I wasn't there. But <laughs> <laughs> three and a half. Oh, okay. I, yeah, it still happened. I think every show I've attended, though, every show on uh, on in my memory, uh, was super successful, super packed, major mm-hmm. draw. Everyone mm-hmm. there loves to hang out with mm-hmm. each other. No drama. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, exactly. Those are the best kinds of shows, man. Yeah, let, let me tell you, like, yeah, we started doing those shows at the Media Club, uh, probably, I think it was last year, but this year we had uh, three big ones, and big ones, you know, by by standards of what I do and, and uh, what we what the capacity of Media Club is. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the full focus was uh, this year just local musicians because I'm very, very proud, thankful, and a general, um, you know, loving, in love with the uh, local punk rock scene. And I'm love the people in it. I love, the, the, obviously, the bands. And uh, this show, I just wanted to celebrate. I think we had a great year. The first uh, the first show was the Resolve Records thing. Remember, you, you, right, you yeah. had them on the show as well. So they started off the year strong. And then we had a show, uh, Rocket for Mash Anniversary, which I usually do in the summertime. Yeah. And then I was back, and I want. I felt like it was a great year, not only because just all of those three shows, but a uh, couple of bands toured, a couple of bands um, released new music. Uh, it was, in my opinion, very successful, and also, you know, you uh, began doing their album. So there are things happening. There's something happening in the scene. Uh, more people coming out to the shows. There are more familiar pa- faces, and I think this our little punk rock scene is growing. Certainly growing, and I think it's evident every time you go to these shows. Like. Like, again, I have to reiterate, like, I was like, yeah, we're going to promo the fuck out of this, but we almost don't have to because, like, it's growing so easily. But, you know, you have to be due diligent and, like, have all your uh, ducks in a row, make sure everything's taken care of. But at the same time, I mean, it's uh, like it has to be acknowledged how much it's growing and and how much a part of that you are. You're you're definitely, you know, putting these groups together because I even said to Saavedra during the show, I said... uh, if I believe, I, I believe I said, uh, I would pay w- like anything to see one of these bands, and that all of them were on the bill. And because I, I, I love all these groups, I've been watching them for a little bit now, and they're so good. I, I think, uh, you know, what group had a, a standout performance to me though was you, big idiot. Yeah. I think they are, they're always such a great, like everyone did great job that night, but uh, you, big idiot, really stood out, like to the point that Seamart. Uh, actually was uh, just a little tad late coming into the set and his first question was like his, when he came to the venue was like oh what did you big idiot dress up as like <laughs> the fact that that's like the first question is so good and can that, I give you some exclusive on that please oh, we, I, should, we should explain first maybe what they did with it because like people that don't oh, yeah sure yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I still so, still with that on that topic yeah go oh, ahead we stay into the course no no oh uh, yeah I, I go ahead yeah go ahead yeah uh, yeah so the you big idiot they're known for um coming up with, with um themes for every show um <laughs> costumes and things like that so they've done christmas is Ju- in july that was a christmas show and like they do weird things they dress up as cowboys and they hold this whole thing and so committed though exactly. like we, we need to really they go deep on it drive exactly. home how committed when they did the cowboy thing he spoke with a texanian accent or texanian. How you call it? <laughs> i think that's the word texanian, texanian accent. Yep. so yeah so they do they, they it's not like hey we dressed up like cowboys that's funny. No, they actually have a story. The whole show, they were uh, fighting, uh, looking for the uh, some criminal. And it was Schaefer, who is the bassist in the band. Yeah. But they couldn't find him during the show. In the end, they found him. So there was the whole story. Like, you know, this is like, where's this guy? And there was all over the, like, and it's also another thing. Like, when they had the uh, cowboy thing, they had uh, Schaefer's fa- uh, face 
posters all over the, the club missing you know like those yeah. so like it's, it's not like they just dress, dress up no they actually come up those ideas come That's up the whole story they have this band chat and they they just chat and like I saw that put it they, together and they, they yeah oh let's do this let's do this let's do it's that. so good it's so entertaining like from top to bottom it is so entertaining um, they had Simpson samples all throughout like the yeah. bovine university so this time they dressed up as like cows <laughs> they all dressed up as cows, yeah. and they weren't you, big idiot. They were moo, big idiot, <laughs> to the point that the crowd was like, like in response, them. mooing for them, like, <laughs> like after every good song, moo, yeah, yeah, yeah. so good. <laughs> it was really good. It was, a, uh, I'm going to Bovine University. It's so hilarious. Yeah, it was yeah. really good, man. Yeah, it sounded great. Um, uh, I, I thought uh, I thought the core was amazing too. I, th I thought they had a fucking awesome set. Yeah, yeah. That was Pretty really good. Boy, nice fake out from the core with uh, oh, the decline. Hilarious. All I heard. They got me. Yeah, I heard. It's like just the opening chord, and then it's like we're gonna play the whole thing because it's like yeah, supposed yeah. to be like twenty minute tight sets, like yeah. greatest hit sets. Yeah, we're gonna play one song. The decline. <laughs> yeah, this, this one goes out to Tim. They start playing like decline, and then they switch to like Spice Girls. Or yeah. Something. <laughs> they totally got. I was like. I didn't think they would do the whole twenty minutes because I, I knew I knew the menu for the for the for the night. Right. They shouldn't be breaking the rules, but I thought maybe they'll do the first couple of minutes, you know, just yeah. to make me happy. And they switched and made Spice Girls. Happy. That was really good too. That was fucking awesome. I, I also thought uh, Greatest Sons uh, had a, an amazing set as always. Dude, they uh, they have like a special connection with the crowd. I, I I've noticed it yeah. the last couple times now where like. Um, a lot of like every every group is getting sing along and like like chants back and things like that. But like Greatest Sons have like yeah. this uh, you know this other little edge to I don't know what it is, but like you see it you see it every time where like the crowd just uh, connects in a different way. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like if if you big idiot is like just entertaining from top to bottom yeah. banter. Uh, content, songs, everything that that that's awesome, and the crowd's so like laughing along with that. But it's like greatest sons; they have like this like chanting aspect yeah, exactly. to that. Like I don't know, it, it's it's awesome. It's a great yeah, show yeah. from top to bottom. Yeah, okay. Speaking of good covers, though, you big idiots, uh, torn cover. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. it should be on their new album. Yeah, yeah I think which is like, great. Nice. Which I which I know they they've been playing for a bit. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, um, oh, yeah, that uh, Natalie and Bruglia cover yeah, is hilarious. Really good so yeah. good. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's go back to that ex exclusive information, which I'll just give out to the intergalactic interview. Okay, what's up? Uh, um, so um, originally, like I said, going back to the idea of the show, I just wanted to celebrate the end of the show with a big uh, show, like with the, you know the, the exclamation point. Because, like I said, I felt like that was a great year for all the bands, for for all for all of us. So I just wanted to make a big show. So I wanted to have. Technically, let's call them five local headliners. O obviously, on our level, but I want to have five headliners. Right. So originally, instead of Anthens, it was supp supposed to be Elsmere. So five big bands. Right. And they, unfortunately, for personal reasons, they couldn't make it. Right. Uh, Pretty but, well known why, you know, obviously in the yeah. scene, but uh, we won't get into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's okay. It's, um, so what we agreed to do that that was my idea and i shared with them everybody was into that because all five bands are equal in my opinion they have equal draws equal 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 everything mm -hmm. i said let's do this let's just i'll put your names in a hat and then i take the bands out and whoever headlines whoever plays first and mm -hmm. um, you know we'll, we'll do it fair because i'll do everything about fair right everything is fair with me even like you know some i don't know if it's people should know yeah even with money when we make <laughs> money I break even, and then we split all the money equal. Right. Because, you know, they have, the bands have their costs. I have my cost to put it on the show. But after we break uh, break even with, with the venue, it's always equal. Always. Always, yeah. So the, it doesn't matter who it's headlined. It doesn't matter who, who was. To me, this is a fair approach because I think if we're all doing a great event together, everyone puts in in terms of promotion. Uh, everyone puts in in terms of you know performance and everything else organization but w w in my opinion we do um, all the equal job and it sh should be fair yeah so, yeah that makes sense that, is, that does make a lot of sense yeah of course if we bring no effects to play at the media club and then UB Gideon opens maybe it will be different <laughs> but, <laughs> but slightly <laughs> yeah. slightly slightly yeah. Yeah. it depends on the writer yeah that's funny yeah we were actually joking about that in the crowd which is funny that you brought that up we joked because uh, Savedra saw Louis C.K earlier this week yeah, yeah. and uh you know he dropped in on a few uh comedy nights before his like his his back-to-back -back sets uh earlier last week and they're like sold out sets right but he like dropped in and he's like oh you mind if i do some time whatever like obviously they're gonna make time for louis ck right 
But uh, we were joking, like, that. this would be like if NoFX dropped in right now to, like, yeah. the media club and was like, oh, you might, you guys mind if we just play, like, Murder the Government? You Couple guys tracks. Okay with yeah. Yeah. Couple yeah. tracks. You guys, you guys okay if we play Brews real quick? Is that okay? You're like, yeah, I think it's okay. Like, you just have our set, basically. <laughs> yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. It's funny you were saying that. Um, what what was your uh, favorite release of 2016? Now that we're at the end of the year, can, can I come back? Can I finish the the the? Or you story? Not, I thought you were already yeah, no, done. No, no, no. So you here were, I am. You keep just interrupting. So the audience, wait. The audience is now going to think that I don't respect your time. No, no, no. Or no. Your like we always, effort. when we talk, we go to a million different directions, <laughs> and it takes about an hour to it's complete the story. That's right. That's okay. Go ahead. So, um, <laughs> so when we. So what we decided to do, so Elsmere couldn't do it. Anthons uh, came in, and because that was the first show we've done, I, I said, okay, Anthons, you guys open. Is it okay with you? They said, no problem, we'll open the show. But all the four bands, they were supposed to be just, just a regular drum. Right. So it's uh, for me, being absolutely fair, I didn't want to you know to mess it up, so I invited my buddy, and he, I just put the name in the cup, and then he just draw and then that. And he he knows, like he's been to the previous shows, he knows that I've done a song with, uh, we did a No Facts cover with, Right. You Big Idiot. He knows that, you know, I like all the bands, but he knows that, you know, You Big Idiot. And he takes the the name of the cop, the first one, the second band who's supposed to play after Anthem, and it's You Big Idiot. The guy just like lost, I feel so bad. I think they should, they want to do headline and everything else. He's like, yeah, they're opening the show. He felt so bad. No You Big Idiot going back to them. I felt maybe they will be like, Oh, you know what? Like we, you know, we have our draw. We shouldn't be opening the show. They were super cool about it. They put as much effort as they always do. There was nothing like, oh right. yeah, yeah. So the, the costumes were like top notch. Um, the all preparation was equal. So like, I really, you know, that's again being fair. And they said to me, yeah, you know what? You gave us some headlining spots in the previous nights. It's our turn to play early. That's how the the, the draw worked out. We have no problem. And I saw that from their commitment mm -hmm. in terms of it. It wasn't like, oh yeah, we're not even gonna do costumes this time. Yeah, I, I think that mm -hmm. uh, that says a lot because uh, that speaks a lot about the group just entirely. Not not just you big idiot as a band, but like probably everyone on the bill it was just so cool, man. Like the idea that like you could have a, a frank conversation with them like that, and no one's freaking out, no one's having like a, an ego trip, you mm -hmm. know, like like which happens a lot. And I don't know, like we, uh, uh, I, I performed with Maca recently a couple weeks ago, and uh, we were headlining, and uh, we ended up uh, like taking like an earlier, like a middle, just before last slot kind of thing. And we're like, that's cool, that's cool with us. Like we we're. We're more of the mind state of like whatever's best for the show, right? Like I, I want people to come back. I don't want I don't want it to be like like at the end of the day, who gives a fuck, really? Like at this you know, if you if you're still grinding it out on an indie level, it's Absolutely. like who gives a shit really? Like if you should probably just put all that stuff to the side and just like do what's best for the mm -hmm. show. Entertainment rules mm -hmm. over, mm -hmm. you know, people's egos. That's Absolutely, fucking bullshit. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that uh, everyone was on board, though. That's fucking rad. <laughs> Did we sweat in it at first? Did you think someone was going to have an issue? Uh, with those four bands, no. I'm confident in them because this I've been doing shows and known them for quite some time right now. And this is what I've been uh, kind of, I don't know what's the right word, but like uh, trying to deliver this information to them. So we are all equal. We're all together. We're doing this together. Like I said, in my opinion, they all have fair level fair draw at this at this group of people mm -hmm. and that's how i started doing the shows the money was always like this um a few other things like just like you know like who plays when and like some little things but just we're all doing this together so never ever had a problem with any like egos uh, no which is good man i think that's awesome and then obviously it doesn't take away from your ambition to keep doing shows having to deal with someone like that i think i'm gonna push this mic just towards you a little bit I'm sorry. I feel bad telling you that, giving um, it your on-air personality. Well, I don't hear myself in the... Oh, is that what it is? Would you prefer <laughs> to have headphones on? No, I did the hair today. So. <laughs> <laughs> the hair. Uh, I, uh, I think what I'm gonna, I want to do is I want to get Savedra, ask him if he would ask if there's uh, any questions out there. People oh, wanna... I've been asking. Oh, really? Is there any uh, anything no, worth? No, just uh, love, love for Ellesmere was uh, some of the stuff. Yeah. Love for Ellesmere, yep. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I I feel like uh, and people telling you that uh, the Habs lost tonight. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I'll, it never never fails. So, oh, great. It never Thanks, fails. Thanks everyone. Yeah. <laughs> never fails at uh, 
anytime there's any kind of open channel of me that someone I feel like know not enough people hands. let you know <laughs> about how losing yeah, you know of a what? team. They were all pretty quiet on Saturday, weren't they? 10-1 Habs? Huh? What happened? Erase that 0-10 loss. Should have gone that live does on not Saturday. erase. Should have went live on Saturday. Oh boy, you couldn't couldn't see me. It on doesn't Saturday. erase a ten nothing uh, loss. It it absolutely erases a ten nope. nothing loss. Nope. Says Seymour, who doesn't a support a team, b watch the game, c Says ever stats. have played. Says stats. You don't get to erase things. Oh, it erases. There it. are just different it things. It erases it. It's one for one, bud. It's one for Easy one. Easy there. Just like Conor McGregor is undefeated now. I've seen Conor McGregor <laughs> no, fight a kangaroo. I never, I never fucking said that. It's okay. But I, I will say that uh, I've I've been thinking a lot about, because it's the end of the year, and we've been at Float House now for a year. Mm-hmm. I was thinking we could maybe chat a little bit about like uh, favorite releases. I did ask you a little bit earlier. Yeah, yeah sorry. Well, sorry I interrupted. Yeah. With, you inter- with your yeah. own story. Sorry you interrupted <laughs> with your own story that I interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Like, this is this is Canadian, right? Yeah, that's extra little, polite. Pretty polite. Yeah, <laughs> I I want to know though, like what what was your favorite release this year? Have you given thought to it? Yeah, of course I do. I'm I'm anal like this. I like, <laughs> you know, no, no, eighteen plus. Is that the phrase? It's fine. No, well, I heard this. I think if you're it. anal retentive, which is like kind of a psychological term, I think that means you're like just very control freak. Could it be? Could it be? Isn't that what that means? I don't know if I can know. Doesn't matter. Going back to your question. This is an entertainment <laughs> podcast. I don't give a shit about the medical term. Okay, go ahead. Uh, well, yes, I've been doing best of lists since for definitely over 10 years. I think the first one was 2004. And yeah, I've been doing those lists. And um, since I started doing the Rocket from Russia, this is, I always end up the year. The second last episode is the best local releases of the year. And right. the last uh, episode is always the best releases of the year. And um, so, yeah, so obviously I, ha- I have been thinking about it. And I have my top three. And again, exclusively, I never give out this information before the end of the year, before that episode. <laughs> but I'll give it to you because you okay, super here kind we to go. Me. We're live. What do people uh, live? Do they want to know it is top? Uh, top oh, I like know it's both, Taylor Swift. Both questions, uh, I just uh, know it is. What both of you are rocking on the headphones. So. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so by uh, all let's see this works. Let's see your top. Uh, so, um, uh, I'm I'm very I'm unbiased or bias bias, uh, and uh, my top release is my favorite band of all time is No Effects. They released this new album this year. Shocker, shocker. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, actually, it is a, a no. It's not a shocker, but it, it no, wasn't. It's not a shocker. It wasn't <laughs> given uh, because, for example, I wasn't big on their the previous album. It was uh, self entitled. Mm. It was a, it was a, it was an album, but it wasn't like definitely my best release of the year. I didn't listen to it much, and I just. Yeah, but then uh, another release which I think will be my release number two is the band called Pop from Toronto, Ontario. Yeah, they've been killing it. Actually, uh, am I wrong in saying that friend of the show Paige Sierra just shot uh, their music? Like she shot stills. For yeah, their... she was the one doing the stills at the music. She video. did all the stills hmm. for their music That's video. Good. Yeah, I know that they did it here. Yeah, yeah, they did it with the Stranger Things kid. What's that kid's name? The the. The, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, his yeah. first name like Wolfgang or something. Sasa, like that. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. But like Paige Sierra did all their uh, did all their uh, uh, still photos for the music video. It came out awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. It was really good. But you, I didn't know you were like I actually I know Savedja checked out their show when they were here. Pop, right? Yeah, I was there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a pretty rad group. That's awesome, man. The show was absolutely amazing. Yeah. They're sweat. They're so good. They're yeah, so good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then the release number three, top three, I'll, uh, it will be a Russian band called Tini Svoboda. Nobody knows them. I just learned. Tini Svoboda? What? Very good. Very good well, Russian. I don't want to brag, but I just learned it. You got like 64% <laughs> of right pronunciation. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so okay. pretty low. Uh, yeah, so like it's a it's a, it's a Russian band which I like, and um, and some other releases which I've been listening. It's a band uh, called Wonk Unit, which I think people should listen to. Extremely funny from Britain, and I saw them a few months back in Florida, and it was just unbelievable. The guy is so oh, charism- you caught them at Fest. That's correct information. Okay. So the guy is so charismatic. Before every song, he tells a story, and it's actually funny. And you know how they speak to this weird English accent? Right. So he speaks to this one, plus it's funny, plus good songs. Like okay. It, and it's... So yeah. it's like a good recipe right from the beginning. Yeah, exactly. I see. Okay. Yeah. We should That's put awesome. these uh, bands or releases in the show notes. That's right. I will. Uh, really quickly, just name them real quick so when I scan to this moment and I'm <laughs> What are we talking What minutes is it so he can yeah. find it easily? <laughs> yeah. uh, so... Top three. Top three. No effects. 
first ditch effort. Number two, pop, the dream is over. And tennis That's, That's right, number man. three. I, uh, I actually, uh, I don't have three uh, albums, but I have like three artists. Yeah, yeah. Three artists um, very easily right off the bat. Uh, I, w- I was late in the year into this. Um, but I, once I was put onto it, I, I, I haven't stopped listening. So I've been listening Taylor? to, uh, <laughs> yeah, Seamart throwing an honorable mention to Taylor Swift, Seamart <laughs> out there. Um, uh, so my, I, I'd say Anderson pack, Anderson pack is doing everything right now that I, I like, like he, I, he can't do anything wrong. He's putting everything out. I'm just like, I love this. I love the way this sounds. It like blends really well with like stuff I'm already into. Like it, he's, he just has he just has that vibe. I don't know. Am I wrong to say that? Does that make sense? Yeah. He like he has like just this dope, dope feel to him. I really think it's dope. I think uh, next up was like a super late comer in the year. Like it just came out like a week or two ago. But uh, the new Childish Gambino uh, album is fucking amazing. So again, I'm not doing albums, but like his album, mm-hmm. his most recent album is like, uh, it was so inspiring. I, I was so shocked. When I said I was joking about shocker about the no effects thing to you, but like this was a shocker for me because like I think I've maybe listened to like three, maybe four songs from Childish Gambino ever, mm-hmm. and uh, I heard this album and I, I front to back twice before I was like, oh my god, this is crazy, like back to back, back to back, back to like, and now I just listen to it all the time. It's it's such a great album. I think if I had to go to a, a third record though, uh, like a third artist, I don't know, man. Uh, Jamie liked the Metallica record. Yeah, I, haven't, I haven't listened yet. <laughs> I did like the single, the whatever, but I, I, I haven't actually checked the whole album yet. But uh, I was, I was going to say, you know, you know what was really fucking cool to me was uh, uh, I was really impressed. Here comes a shock. I was actually really impressed with uh, Justin Bieber's album. I thought it was actually really well, well produced, like really well written. And Do you mean like well produced from like pop music of you or like from just in general talented um, songwriting or like sonically yeah like sonically it was like really well produced so but well like produced. the amount of times i i talked to someone that was like into a song that they didn't even know was justin bieber uh-huh. was like countless times like a dozen times this year someone's like i like this and then you're like this is justin bieber this uh-huh. is produced by like skrillex or diplo or whatever yeah and they're like, oh, I, oh, uh, well, is yeah, that who okay. produces yeah, Bieber right now? They change it, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, they, they they do a bunch of co-production oh, stuff nice. in his new record, but interesting. But uh, he he just like uh, I feel like we watched kind of like the evolution of an artist in Justin Bieber this year. Like he went from like this kind of piss pants, nobody likes him kind of fucking guy to like now no one likes him, whatever. But like he's uh, at least he's you have to acknowledge his talent. Like he has like this really strong songwriting ability, and and he's like got great delivery so fuck it everyone out there that thinks that that's the wrong choice to make but uh those are the three artists that impressed me uh i don't know he wrote he wrote a couple of them he wrote that fucking uh go fuck yourself one or whatever that of course one. he did yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know is that the, is that the defining moment we're gonna, I we're mean, gonna take away a, the rest of his accomplishments he hasn't written any kind of one? uh teardrops <laughs> on my guitar yeah i don't know but like it, in my heart i, I feel like any list that but doesn't include that. Fuck yourself, so. Any list that doesn't include that though is like is like just kind of you know, like present company excluded. I just think that like you have to acknowledge that stuff in pop music. Like he he did something pretty spectacular this year, and uh, despite all the fucking hate. avalanche of hate, yeah, like so much. Like I'm gonna get hate for saying that. That's how much hate that guy gets. Like, I can't even say that he did good. <laughs> that kind of thing. You know, just silly. But uh, those, those are like kind of like the, the three artists I think were, were killing it this year. Mike? Yes, Avedra? We'll give this. I'll take this. Oh, God, my wrist God, she's warm. killing me. Yeah, yeah it was she's an warm. warm. Like, fuck she's warm. You should see how hot that battery gets after the end of this shit. Jesus. <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, uh, fuck. Like, I, I got the... Viewers just went down, bud. Just so <laughs> yeah, no, no doubt. We've only been at, like, four viewers the whole time. <laughs> JK. JK. Yeah. Uh, I just actually, on the way here, I just looked at my... Uh, uh, cause Spotify compiles, like, all the crap that you yeah, listen yeah, to yeah. for the year. I got this It was up. literally only, like... Master Intruder and Frank Turner, so I shouldn't be talking about <laughs> shit. But just like, well, I listen to that EP like repeatedly, like everywhere I go. It's the perfect amount of music. It's 20 minutes. I'm 20 minutes from wherever I'm going in this city. So it's, it's a good EP. I just throw it on. I'm like, I like this. It's really good. 
So there you go. Mass Intruder, number one. Pup, number two. Uh, direct Hick, number three. Nice. Let's go with that. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Very good. Very, very good. good. Very simple. I'm a, I'm a simple guy. You did really well. Uh, but uh, no, notable things, like outside of the punk rock stuff that I was listening to, I really like that Avalanche's record this year. Mm. Super, super good. Uh, oh, how the fuck did I not mention the Avalanche's record? It's fucked, man. I've been waiting for how long has it been? Dude, that one song 17 like, years since the last record. Fuck, great right. record. Great Zane record. Zane record. Zane I haven't heard it. So and uh, Tribe Called Quest's uh, album is uh, also fucking awesome. Yeah. I'm, uh, I, I like it. But it, All right, yeah, we've, we've already covered this we've repeatedly. Covered this. Oh, God. So I like the fucking record, and this guy can go fuck himself. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I like it. It's good. It's just, Q-Tip's one of my favorites, man. I think it's fucking... I think it's worth mentioning, though, that like uh, the the entirety of all this is so subjective. Like Everyone's going to listen to what you want, especially in this age where you can make your own playlists and determine what you have all day long. Or even just make your own music. True, and just have. You know what I mean? Music. Like the accessibility yeah. of I, music making tools is. Un- I think it's, it uh, only gets crazier every like minute. It feels yeah, like. like. I think. Okay, we talked a little bit about this before, but you, anyone can make music in terms of like tools and resources. Anyone can do it. Like talent is one thing, mm-hmm. but like anyone can make music. But if you think about like in an analogy of guitar sales, they've been selling guitars for hundreds mm-hmm. of years, but prolifically so much in the last hundred years that it you know when you think of guitar players now it's like you know there's a few names that come to mind but realistically even though anyone can buy a guitar there's only been so many like eric clapton's and you know uh stevie stevie vi and all like like stevie ray vi like uh stevie ray what the fuck like i'm just i'm trying to give you examples here whatever but like even if you were to say like fat mike there's only been so many guys that have like, oh, his ideas for chord structure, his ideas for songs, like that kind Melodies. of thing. And, but every, yeah, but anyone can buy a guitar. Like, like I, think, I think that's beautiful. I think when technology opens up, it's, a, it's an amazing thing. Just like podcasts and radio shows, things like that. Like, I'm always like, you should do it. Like how many times this year do we encourage someone to do their own show? Probably like, once every other episode. Yeah, <laughs> probably, yeah. You made me do it yeah, on your show. Only because most people already had their own show, basically, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I was like, you should do a show, Rush and Tim. Have you thought about doing your own domestic terrestrial radio show? <laughs> that kind of thing. Sometimes when uh, when uh, Tim's on the show, I actually think about the fact that uh, he's, like, playing, like, for real, with, like, real radio, and, like, then he comes and hangs with us, and it's like he he's like practicing here or something like that. This is because like this isn't a real show. No, like so. this is the first time we, first time we're going live. So yeah, that's a little bit different. But there's a different approach between being a podcast and being uh, live. That's true. Being live has like, like it gives you it gives you yeah. I always try to tell people I'm like don't worry. It's just the internet. It's just forever. It's yeah. <laughs> no, but like if you say something completely ridiculous, you can technically cut it out. Yeah. Te- well, technically. technically, I don't think I've ever edited the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think one time I had someone ask me, I had a comedian ask me to cut out some people's names in a story just because they wanted to keep getting booked or something. That was about it. But like, I didn't have any real, uh, what's the word? I, I didn't have issues. Any issues. No, I, I've always just been like, if you're on the show, it's going to be in the show. We're yeah, not yeah. going to edit. No, that's actually the right approach because, like, um, I think the the rule the the way the rules works between journalists and yeah. artists when they're getting interviewed, like whatever you say, that's on the tape. That's right. If because you if you want, ask me. Then let let's stop <clears> it or <throat> let's uh, let's you know let's let's talk not about it. But yeah, generally speaking, as the way I say, the way I think it is, like you need to control what's coming out of your mouth. Yeah, I think that like a lot of artists take. Uh, advantage of the fact that like you can edit and you can like go back and fix things yeah, so yeah. there is a question here sorry oh we got a question. what's the secret to those sick beards this beard right here yeah this beard right here let's get this on the main podcast camera so they know let's go <laughs> just so they know what we're talking about this beard right here I, uh, you want to feel yeah <laughs> right here uh, I actually uh, I I don't know what is the secret to this. I think genetics, time, time oh. and genetics. I think because like I don't know if you guys have ever seen G Tone's beard, but he puts mine to shame a hundred times over, and uh, uh, I, I get complimented on this motherfucker all the time. But I, it literally, I don't know why you get complimented on a beard. 
It's like when people compliment haircuts. It's like you did nothing to do it. Like sure, it, it yeah. Just, it just basically you know, like sheer yeah. will. I could see complimenting the barber or stylist that did your hair. Mm -hmm. But like I literally just grew it. Like what did I do? I didn't do anything. We're getting complimented on your beard right now. So yeah, we had a question about the uh, what's the secret to the, what's to the, the secret beards? to your crazy ass beard? It's secret to my beard. Yeah, let's look, at, let's look at Saavedra's beard for a sec. It's very lush. Look at that fucking... Look at, let's run a comb through this motherfucker. <laughs> I do. I run combs through it every time, every day. I've seen your bathroom. You have every many day. products. Yes. R E. <laughs> I'm a man that has, to loves a lot of oils for his beards. A lot of different balms. You know, every day. I, lo I love that stuff. <laughs> different, different oils, essential oils, and uh, has to smell good. What do you use? Huh? What do you use? That's what people want to know. Well, I use a little bit of uh, Ruzel uh, beard balm. It <laughs> makes my beard. Ruzel. It makes my beard nice and soft. You know, I've uh, I've been using uh, coconut it's oil. oil, right? I just, I just use coconut oil. Coconut oil, get it. from yeah. a jar. Yeah, I had I had friend of the show Jay Rude from DLW tell me that that's what he uses, and he has like a a man beard like crazy, and uh, he told me I I thought maybe he made like his own or something like with coconut oil, but he literally just used coconut oil. Hmm. He says it fucks up his uh, pillowcases, but that's about it. Because mm -hmm. he goes to sleep with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what you rush, Tim? Why don't you wear a fucking crazy beard? Didn't you used to wear a beard for a I bit? I did. You used to, yes. Yeah, but, but then somebody told me that I have to look professional for work. There you go. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, I think I was off for by for your work. by your logic, we are not professional. I'm certain that's why I can't find a better job. <laughs> I'm almost certain. <laughs> it's yeah. all about the beard. <laughs> But yeah, when I came into work and uh, I have a mentor at work who helps me out, um, like a guy who I trust, I, have, I was at work for a couple of weeks and then he was like, you look like a drummer in some band. Can you shave off? And yeah. Big time. That's funny. I would like to thank Off the Rail again uh, yeah. for this fantastic beer. Pass that beer there, bro. Pass me again, that uh, Yeah. Drink some beer, folks, this holiday season. Checkmate beer from <laughs> Off the Rail Brewing. Very excited and very thankful that we've been gifted such wonderful beer from wonderful uh, breweries. Uh, this one in particular is becoming a fast favorite of mine. I think that uh, I guys, I have to say you guys all know that I like whiskey. But uh, no. if I had to drink a few beers, this would be the one. Off the Rail. Boom! Right from the growler. Super fresh. That's what I like. Actually, you, you definitely sold me. It's pretty good, right? Uh, for me, like it's uh, like I like I like beer in general, but I like supporting people, you know, who support my friends or who like who like my friends relate to. So yeah, if if for example they're helping out for sure on the Christmas season, I'm going there for for. So at least the, you can grab the beers in uh, the BCL and all the liquor stores. All the liquor stores carrying these guys right now. Nice, they're yeah. really good, man. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think people that don't necessarily have the uh, the access to craft beers that we have out here like if you're watching this wherever the fuck you're watching this or listening to this right now like like if you can just um check out a random menu of like craft beer do yourself a favor just you know yeah. explore a little bit like there's more than like the two or three major breweries in canada like it, it's it kind of seems like a dumb point to make at this this stage but at the same time it's crazy how many different things you find all the time. I had actually something the other day called Russian Imperial Stout. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah a classic. It's a classic. Yeah. You had that, yeah? I tried that for the first time, and I, I loved do you, it. Do you remember yeah. which uh, brewery was making that? Oh, shit. See, now here's the thing. This is the biggest problem that I have is that I find something I like, and then I'll go back to the place, and it, because it's a craft brew, it's just like, oh, well, the, the, the rotating it's time. It's gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seasonal yeah, well, or something. Gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I, I hate that, but at the same time, like, like I don't know, I, I what's that one stuff I like? It was like the backhand of God or some shit. Yeah, like that's that. a stout from uh, Cranog, Cranog Ales out on the island. Really? Yeah. So I didn't know it was even Canadian. I didn't even know that. I yeah, just, they're, like, they're I didn't know full organic actually. brewing. When I don't know what to pick, I just go with the craziest name. So breweries. Out there. I never do that. <laughs> I go with the lightest. <laughs> wimpiest beer the lightest name i was like do you have a pilsner or a lager do you have no? an angel hair pasta yeah 
<laughs> Spaghetti, please. Yeah, please. <laughs> please. Back in my hometown, we have this uh, sports bar. It's called Champion. It's a mix on Champion and Piva. Piva is beer. Yeah. So it's like a mix. Mm. It's a sport bar. Very like if they. <laughs> so all their menu <laughs> is. Um, is that Russian for yeah. beer? Piva. Piva. Yeah. Piva. Yeah. Piva? Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. So Champion and Piva. Beach is also to drink, so it's mm. it's 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 a very no, whatever. So <laughs> on the menu, everything they have is a definite. It's a sports team or a sports person or whatever. So there was a player who played for my team, and I really wanted to try it out. And I was like, oh, that, I like this player, so I just support him and like order something like this. <laughs> oh shit, man! They brought some horrible <laughs> garbage. It was a mix of soup and and, and meat, and and I didn't like it. And it was one of my favorite players. <laughs> so <laughs> be careful, Seymour. Okay. You, oh no, who goes by the name? You go by the name. Yeah. By the name of the menu. I do go by the name. I go by the crazy name. I don't do that. <laughs> Let me ask the. Uh, Although, if I was in Russia, I would order all sorts of stuff. Just in. Like. Anything on the menu would look weird to you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't, uh, I don't even I know this, this one. Cyrillic like, yeah, language I or the Cyrillic <laughs> alphabet. Let me ask the uh, online viewers really quick. Uh, what was the worst. Mo- the last. Worst drink you ever had? Like what was the, like worst. the last worst, most recent worst oh. drink you ever had? Because I've had I had some stuff forever ago that was I still think it's the worst stuff. This stuff called like strew, <laughs> strew hole or strew. Yeah, it was it was this it tasted like nail polish. It was the worst Oof. thing I've ever had. Yeah, it's I'd like was it a liquor? It was like a liqueur, like a yeah, like a like a like a Thick. spirit. Yeah, thick. Hmm. Like, yeah, it like and it came in this little like green bottle, almost like a Jägermeister bottle, mm. but it was like this little thing. It was called like Schru, and it was so it German. Gross. It was it German. Had, it was German actually. <laughs> yeah, it had like r- like a raspberry hmm. kind of vibe to it. It was so gross. Like I, like I don't know. I, I drink Jack all the time, and everyone's always like, "Oh, how do you drink that stuff?" And I'm like, "That is easy as fuck. This stuff, I I would never touch that stuff ever again." Schru, ugh. I don't even know if that's it. <laughs> liqueurs and like weird herbal like European liquors, I think, are some yeah. of the hardest things to drink. Like they just they have this funk to them and they have this weird herbal quality. And I think almost every like European country, it seems like, has their own particular one that they like. And it's usually like overproof and it's like 50%. 50 percent. And you're just like, minimum. yeah, it's green as hell, and you're like, I'm not putting that in my fucking cup. Like and it just ah, it's you take one you sip and you're just good. like, man, that's powerfully disgusting like that's <laughs> oh, i don't I, I i can't explain like some of those liquors from like foreign countries yeah. and i know south american countries have the same bullshit too like they're like hey here drink this you're like not a fucking chance like <laughs> shit that comes in like wooden bowls you're like <laughs> here, have, a, have a sip out of this you're like no thanks <laughs> fucking I, wooden bowls i can tell there is a stories also, there is a ahead. korean i think it's like a, a be, it's a beer thing but it, it's like a, it's creamy looking, like it's white. And it comes in a bowl, not a wooden bowl, but I just, Koreans drink some interesting drinks. I'll tell you that right now. Are you now. trying to make a hate crime right now nope. against the Korean nope. people? Just saying they drink, like, I appreciate, it's kind of like, I think even maybe more akin to like Russian culture. It's like, there's a lot of like alcohol with food mm-hmm. in general. Mm-hmm. Like you get mm-hmm. food. You get more drinks, you get more food, and you get more drinks. And it's not this like, oh, having a beer with dinner. It's like, you're like, you're drinking. It's part but of But you're yeah, also eating. I see. Yeah. And it kind of keeps you. Do you, remember, you don't remember the name of it, though? It's no, like a I cream. can't remember. It's a, I think it's a rice wine on some level or a rice beer, mm. but it's very white. And it just came in a bowl. And you didn't like it? It was fine. It was good. It was good. So, what was the worst one you've had then? That's the question um, of the year. Well, for a while, I wasn't able to drink. Um, uh, what's the? Uh, this should be good because you no, drink the, no, I I stopped. No, no, no. I was I actually couldn't drink it anymore. Uh, what is it? Sake? No, not yeah, sake. sake. sake Just sake, yeah, straight yeah. up. Or no, it was soju. soju. I couldn't. I drank too much soju at once. Over I've an never evening. really been like a sake fan ever. I can't, yeah, I can't really get. I don't know. Liquor shouldn't be warm. Actually, I'll say this. No, it comes you know, in both varieties. It's good. It can you? Oh yeah. I've I think warm sake warm. is supposed to be the cheap one. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. 
I don't know enough about it, but I will say that like the times I have had it, I I, I could pass. Like if that was all the liquor that was left in the world, I. I'd be okay. Just go straight edge right now. Like, it makes you feel like an alcoholic <laughs> because you have to order it bottle by <laughs> bottle as a table. And I feel like at the, like, the 15th bottle, you're like, okay, why are we drinking so much? But you're like, they're little. But I don't know. Something about just warm. Feels, it's, warm not like warm. it's not warm. Well, it's not warm. Yeah. It okay, doesn't have to be there's warm. There's a Jack Daniels that you warm up called Winter... Winter Jack. Winter Jack or whatever, yeah. Why aren't we drinking that? Uh, I have a bottle of that right now at the house too. I'd like definitely. to try uh, we should definitely try that out. Um, next, you heat it up, Monday. though. Here's the thing, though. It's, it's Jack Daniels, but it's only like 18%. I don't like it. So it's like a wine, basically. And uh, you heat it up on the stove like you would sake or something. And then you serve it. It's like a seasonal drink. And uh, I've had it. And uh, I, I, I don't Is it know. like peppermint? It's yeah, it's got like a holiday kind of taste to it. Yeah, like peppermint, like no vanilla, like a nutmeg. Cane. Yeah, what like the crap they serve yeah. on Granville Island. Hold her now, you're disparaging an entire <laughs> nation. No, I don't know culture. Most people that are Brewery. probably watching this, they're all like, mm, I love that winter ale. I do love winter ale, That's actually. Gross. I do love Winter Ale, but not as much as I love Off the Rail Brewing Company's Checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic drink. Nice. I mean, let's get real. It is very good. Go. Very good. Mm. There we go. I mean, who am I to say anything bad about it? You who know, are you? Great logger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually know anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I, we put it all out there. There we go. Up. We got a couple people joining me here. Winter ale is gross. Seriously. Go. Oh, <laughs> just, oh. You know, Svedger only, he only parrots what they say when they agree with what yeah, they're I mean, saying. It's, it's making me sound I right. just held it for a Thank second. You. I was reading all the chat stuff. I'm like, oh, there's lots of stuff in here. It's like, oh. Uh, if it, uh, Winter Jack is apparently an apple cinnamon flavor. Oh, here we go. Here we go. The cinnamon. facts. Apple the real cinnamon. facts. Oh. That makes sense. Read out was, what, what else are they saying? Yeah. Oh, I'm just saying that this is the latest that's what's coming up here. Thanks Thanks for the update, people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was your fiance chiming in with the apple cinnamon flavor. She's she lovely. just looked at the bottle. <laughs> yeah, that's not fair. It's like sitting on the counter. <laughs> yeah, she, <laughs> she's she's cheating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Uh, I, I was actually going to ask you, uh, uh, Tim, with, with everything that's been going on recently, how many years have you been doing Rocket from Russia now? Uh, it will be seven in uh, uh, January. Seven in January. I think that with a milestone like that, you have to probably give pause and reflect of like everything you've accomplished so far. Do you have like immediate plans for the show, like expansion maybe, something like that? Like what do you want to do? Well, for me, the, the main goal is for me to have fun. As long as I'm having fun, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm it's interesting to me. Mm. So for me, the main goal is to have fun, and I usually have fun through coming up with new ideas. I don't like um, doing something. Con- the only thing in music I do consistently is Rocket from Russia because I just really have fun because I love punk rock music. Just coming up with an episode of new music every 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 week. Right. At the same time, I had period when I was I've been doing trivia, then I've been doing DJ. Now I've been doing shows for a little bit. Uh, at the show, somebody asked me to join a band. I don't know. Maybe I'll do that because it will be fun for a little bit. But then I'll come up with some new idea, and that will be fun. So for the show, join a band, really? They want me to do that. I mean, you you have tremendous experience from back in the day, fronting a, an amazing group, uh, which which we are all aware of. But I, I just I, I I'm I'm a little surprised. You, you'd go back on stage. You think you'd, you'd jump back into it? He was on stage on the weekend. I mean, <laughs> back on stage with the performing aspect is what I mean. Like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it may well be fun. Maybe it won't. I don't know. Maybe I don't want to do something. I don't want to commit to something long term. But if I do something for short term, maybe it will be fun. I don't know. I already have a plan for the next. Mm. For the next, should I spoil the surprise? No, I'm spoiling too many surprises here. You already gave us a lot of exclusives, but people are still watching. People want to know right now. They want to know what you do. I, I understand though. I feel the same way. Like it's it's something where I. There's no way I'm ever going to commit to something where it's like a full time thing anymore. Exactly. Yeah. But I want to go and like you know, I'm, I'd be happy to play one or two shows a year and just have a have a good time with it. 
and you know not be serious about music but just do it for my own enjoyment exactly and exactly i guess if people that you're playing with can accept that exactly then, then why the hell not like, exactly. why the hell not like well, yeah. be a part of yeah. a big podcast even like, if it's oh. just like half of it's like you know just <laughs> shitty covers that you love to fucking play and exactly. just rip live yeah. why why exactly why isn't that exactly like, why can't that be yeah thing? because really like there's no goals to be achieved in in that uh, terms so for me like really uh, like here i'm selling right now myself so i did a no effects cover with you big idiot i did a good reasons cover with with um, the uh, Contra Code. So yeah, maybe I'll do a cover. Maybe in, somebody invite me. Maybe. Listeners, hey invite yo. me to do a <laughs> cover with hey yourself. <laughs> but yeah, for me, this is a something, a new little project which I have to commit for a couple of weeks and listen to the song for 600 times. Maybe even learn the lyrics and then play it and then on to the new thing. Right, yeah. And it's like a new, like, I'm sure this is the same with you with music. There's a project you're currently working on. You focus on that and then boom, you gave your best and then the next idea, next next yeah. interview That's next the thing like yeah it's like a it's like a full body like effort where you like you just give everything to it for that moment like while the, the cycle of the project's going on and sometimes it lingers more than than you were planning but then at the same time you're still giving it the same effort right like whether you're you're, you're like at the beginning or the end of the project you just keep going like like you want right. it to be the most all right i'm done with this i think like, uh, i think we've, we've uh i think we've uh we're probably gonna say goodbye to facebook now if that's okay. we should Yes. Should probably say goodbye. Uh, thank you guys very much for tuning in. We're going to jump back to the podcast. You guys can watch us on YouTube. Please subscribe to us on iTunes, Intergalactic Interviews, and on uh, we're also on Stitcher and we're on SoundCloud. It's funny. Well, it's really true that you have your face. Yep, it is weird. Look at that. Okay, <laughs> we're going to break the internet if we keep doing this. Okay, anyway, uh, we love you guys. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you guys real soon. Goodbye. There you go. How about that? Now we can get back to the goddamn oh, show. I can, you know. These are fun. That's good. It's fun to go live. I'll say this. It's fun to go live, but it certainly changes the flavor of the show. Like, big time. Like, like it goes from, like, uh, uh, an intense back and forth across the table here to, like, uh, you know, we have this kind of... I don't know, like lackadaisical kind it's, of. It's, it's almost loose. like like if, it's pretty loose. If we want to keep doing it, it's almost like we should get like a vice and like a selfie stick, and then just like hold the phone yeah, up like yeah. over yeah. the table so that it's like. Hanging. That's it. Yeah, like that would be like like we could put it over here or something, right? Like like on. Yeah, uh, just so that it's down and like it's always there. This camera's ideal, particularly. Yeah, like that. That the, would be the great. top camera. That's good is too. Nice. It's, it's weird though. Like doing doing live stuff is always going to be a interesting yeah. thing but then you can't reply to people and that's the thing you also want to be able to do so it's, yeah it's the whole point of it it's weird it's yeah. weird it, but yeah uh, your hands got uh, visibly stronger yes. after that oh episode. yeah Just, your hand yeah, yeah, yeah. wrist strength Play yoga pose for the last like 35 <laughs> minutes yeah, yeah pretty, that's all. thank you stoked. yeah yeah that was pretty amazing actually thank you for doing that appreciate it oh yeah um so are we all out of Tim. beer we all of, <laughs> are we all of this great beer yeah i think we're good that's okay. So I'm curious, Tim, what's your uh, like holiday plans, like uh, like Christmas wise or whatever? Do you got like well, shows coming up, or like are you working on anything? No, or, usually like, that season is dead season for shows because of, uh, most of the people just mm-hmm. do the Christmas parties. Mm-hmm. But for me personally, uh, with I still go even I live in Canada, I still go with uh, mainly Russian traditions. So mm-hmm. for us, some good big, progies. Uh, no, he means yeah. like the oh, timing, like the, the actual. Oh yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry as well. <laughs> sorry. But the timing, timing is slightly. I just different. want to talk pro. Sorry, he, sure, just, yeah. he just no. wants to. He just wants to bring up the sweat lodges with the nettles that you like tack on no, your back no. and stuff like that. That's all he wants to bring up. I know it in his heart. <laughs> okay, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, but yeah, so for the um, for uh, the big one is New Year. So thirty mm-hmm. first on the first, and our Christmas is six on the seventh. Oh yeah, it's later. Yeah, it's and really like it starts usually with a massive celebration on the New Year, and then you usually try to recover by the Christmas. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> since, <laughs> since I live, I like Russians. Like their strategy around the holidays is way better than ours. Like, it's pretty smart. Honestly, yeah. honestly, <laughs> people go back to work on the tenth. Really? <laughs> like it's like on the tenth. <laughs> One, two, three. Jesus. One, two, three. You can hardly find a place. Like, obviously, no businesses are open. <laughs> and then, like, some occasional shops start opening, like, uh, four, fifth. <laughs> and then you have, like, a little, what equal equivalent will be the uh, cornerstones. Got to eat down at the gas station. It's the only thing that's open. <laughs> yeah. Thing. yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, uh, like, 
Yeah, I just I'm talking about my city because no, I, I know. know. Yeah. But <laughs> in my city, it's uh, I think it's uh, close to two million capacity. Oh, not capacity, the population. Yeah. So it's a big city. It's not, but it's all dies down. And that's then, fucking crazy, though. And then like, really, you come back. People come back to work like whenever the days work mm-hmm. on the tenth. And then I remember when I was in university, the exams start around like seventh, sixth, seventh, eighth. So you drink party for. Three, four days, five <laughs> responsible people. Three, three, three four, four days, days five. five. <laughs> <laughs> so five days, not three or four. That was just like, that was just a joke. <laughs> oh, that was amazing. And Please you just, keep going. And you just hope that your exam will, would be not on the sixth, but on the eighth. <laughs> that is so good. Uh, hey, what are, are you celebrating with uh, like family and friends? Or, um, or can we come? That was my real question. <laughs> Those are real. And pierogis. Yeah. Back to the pierogis. Yeah, trying I know, to get some I know. pierogis going. Oh. Um, uh, actually, I was talking to my mom to confirm that. Uh, what I decided to do, I will invite them to my place and cook for them. Oh, nice. For my mom and granny. Oh, that'll be great. Um, have you ever done an endeavor like that for Christmas? Uh, not for Christmas, but I have them from time to time. Okay. No, I've been to his place for some of his birthdays. Really? Yeah, yeah. Friggin' amazing. Friggin'. <laughs> Friggin' amazing. Friggin'. Yeah. Censored amazing. It's pretty amazing. I I think that's pretty cool. That I, I think great. I I think I've been trying to like uh, invite yourself. Just get involved. <laughs> <laughs> Straight to it. You know, like let's get to it. You know, like I heard you got a good thing going on. Let's talk just about it. Me, you, my mom, and Granny. Okay, let's do it. This guy wouldn't be able to eat any of that stuff. What do you mean? He is so picky. I bet you he wouldn't eat any of that stuff. You don't have chicken fingers here tonight? (laughs) Oh, no. I can't can't eat any of this. The guy puts ketchup on spaghetti. (laughs) Occasionally, when I'm drunk. Well, I do that. Uh, I like a good pesto. (laughs) I like a good pesto, like a good Alfredo. Like a good. Heinz. By the way, (laughs) call it gravy. If you uh, know what you're oh, talking okay. about, just throwing that out oh, there. Just call it a good, good gravy, nice red gravy. Mm. There you go. Invite this guy to eat any cultural oh, appropriated <laughs> food and be like, yeah, oh, he's You're not like, gonna. Do you like cabbage rolls? He Dude, would say he'd no. He'd peel all the shit off and just eat the bread and be like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Dude, I'd be down. I'd, I'd do it. I well, I I'd try. Yeah, I I'd definitely try. It. What did you say? Cabbage? What do you got on the menu this time? Pierogies, cabbage rolls. No, I'm wet. look for my <laughs> pierogies in Russian are called something else though, right? It's with an S. Some, they're called something else. Yeah, they? yeah, they call ili vareniki ili pilmeni. Yeah, that's the, the second one. Yeah, yeah. Thinking of, yeah. the second I didn't heard that one. I think you before. literally just heard it. I know, no, 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 I pilmeni. heard something. I can't, I can't pronounce it. I just know I saw. Yeah, because. It. <laughs> Spelling. Actually, like pierogi or like how we say it, piragi, this is something, this is, let's say, it's like it's a, a dumpling. It's, no, it's, no, it's like, a, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> you just sorry. correct. No, it's not. I apologize. It's like, a, <laughs> like the actual, what p- pirog means, it's, it's a, it's a pie or a mm. little one is like oh. a little pie. So you have like bread and then you have like meat or like, so then when I got here and they call pilimeni pirogi, it's like you calling hamburger a poutine. That's that's oh, that's, oh, that's how far away those things are. Oh wow! Interesting. Okay. So then let's hmm. yeah. And then the other thing which offends me personally <laughs> when people say <laughs> borsh and then say yeah. tea in the end. There's no tea in the end. No, it's just borsh. It's borsh. Borsh. Yeah. That personally offends me. <laughs> okay. Borsh. <laughs> that's good <laughs> like, to know. Because I word. I think I do put the tea on there. For that's sure. what I saw on, on the when you like go. Yeah. To I say borsh, but I how do you say it with a t? Borscht. Borscht. Yeah. Yeah, I, I saw that on, on, like on that. the menu. I would never say it like that. But so, um, have you ever had bor- borscht here? I have it every week. Said it. <laughs> really? <laughs> my granny cooks me. That's okay, actually what I mean is uh, from a no. Okay. No, my no. She cooks me <clears throat> every week. I stop actually after the podcast. I'm going to her place. She oh, cooked nice. me some soup tonight. She, yeah. Damn. She she puts me in the big jug of soup for the week. You got borscht coming to you tonight. Sure. Wow, you're joining me. Okay. <laughs> I'm working my way into He's the family. I'm that working my way great. into Tim's family. Oh, I've made I'm it like, a few times and I really like it. I'm like, Come are on. we doing Secret Santa this year? Are you going to, you and me? <laughs> a little exchange, huh? <laughs> I'll give you the, the jug of borscht you give me. Uh, I'll give you. Oh, uh, that, that, the Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels. I have, I have, <laughs> we literally have one export where I'm from, me. <laughs> You're not from Tennessee. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> I, uh, you know, just where I, I live. 
I have one export. <laughs> yeah. still, is this or rap And music? one import, <laughs> too. And then the, remember the big fish? I still remember that was from school days. From Husky the Musky. No, no, no. Kenora. Yeah, in Husky the Musky. That's, that's, what, they, that's, that's what they call it. The fucking it. fish thing. The God fish thing. It. That's so funny. They have a statue. I still of remember that. Stupid <laughs> fish. I believe this is like the 30th <laughs> mention of Husky really? the Musky. Oh, that is this so year. funny that so you so said so that. It just keeps coming up. I bring it up a lot. I'll be honest. It does come up. It's like, oh, with the big fish. <laughs> got the big fish going. I'm like, yes. Anytime his hometown comes up. It's like yeah, it is weird. Husky though. the musk. <laughs> Do you know this because of Shockload and Spree Killers tours? And no, I know because of uh, you told it in school back like 10 years ago. I think it was Sean Cole who told us. Oh, who in was college? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy shit. That's, my, that's, that's oh, all. Fuck. Oh, wow. Here I am thinking you learned about this in like elementary school. <laughs> like, there's a big fish in Kenora, Ontario. And yeah, I grew up with that yeah, knowledge. That's, that's what they were telling them there. Yeah, and then I realized it's not that big deal. It's just, just a fish. It's fish. definitely not that big of a deal. <laughs> <laughs> People are making it that way when they bring it up 10 times a year. Actually, uh, this being the end of the year, that's the 10th mention of the fish. Congratulations, you did. Thank it. you so much. I think I'm responsible Amazing. for seven of those. <laughs> yeah, it's all Seymour, basically. <laughs> Good, good. I can fit in in the right uh, yeah, manner. You're, you're in, and uh, and I'm in your family now. <laughs> so I think we're okay. That Borsche. Huh? Yeah. Okay, okay. No, I'm good. I'll keep that in Do mind. Do you even like beets? Uh, I actually check it out. I actually don't even like Borsche. I don't. But it's insane. My grandmother. It's one of the best soups ever. My grandmother is easily. Uh, my grandmother on my father's side is like like Scottish Ukrainian. It's too spicy for me. And- <laughs> Yeah, I actually, I just like never got into it. Really. Doesn't deny it. But uh, I do know that like when men uh, eat a lot of borscht and then go to the washroom after, yeah, it's like a fucking abortion, basically. Doesn't it look awful? It looks pretty awful. Doesn't why would men be me? single on this? I'm just trying to spare women. Is this from... why you don't like it? Is this seriously why you don't like it? So don't be honest. It's no, all right. Never... <laughs> Don't be. No, I've actually never eaten enough to experience Fuck that. Sake. But uh, just beets in general are kind of like they impact your uh, the colors, the color, the colon of the product, right? It's great soup though. Yeah, I it's agree. Fucking amazing. I agree. So you go once a week to get borscht? That's no, amazing. I go more than once a week to visit my granny. But she 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 just called me today and she said, "Should I cook you today? Can you come?" today and uh, i give you, bo- uh, you no, i don't know she said soup i don't know what's gonna and you're like i have to go do a low she said, when can you still podcast. buy i was like probably after after the podcast <laughs> she's like sure and w- did she know what a podcast was is that a real story well my granny is killing it she has an ipad she has she, she has a laptop what? she goes on wikipedia oh, wow. she's she turned eight years old the, a couple of weeks ago eight years old she's russian she doesn't speak any english but she confident oh in internet she skypes with her friends she has an email. She writes emails. She oh, that's has an spectacular. She is fantastic. killing it. Yeah, that's spectacular. Have you guys heard about? Uh, uh, have amazing. you guys ever watched this YouTube channel of this? There's this woman. She's uh-huh. like this 82 year old grandmother, and she plays Skyrim, like the the, R- <laughs> oh, the massive God. RPG really? game. She I've heard about it. I've, have seen, heard it? About I've it? seen clips of it on right. Kotaku and stuff so like that. So I came across this organically, like looking for mods for Fallout. Uh, like mod mod videos and as I was watching this someone it was like suggested like a suggested video and and it was like uh, senior citizen plays Skyrim that's that was the it was like one of these pirated videos of her shit Mm -hmm. so I ended up finding her original stuff eventually but she starts every like first of all she's impossible not to like she starts (laughs) she starts every video with like hello grandkids she calls her viewers grandkids she does about a million fucking views everything so I'm watching this, and I'm like, wow, this is pretty crazy, because she's just playing the game. And she's like, oh, saw another bone dragon today. Well, good thing I saved. Like, you're just like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, like, strange to hear her she's talk got some, about this. She's got some oh. potions. Right. So I'm, I'm watching this, and, and I was like, this is pretty strange. But at the same time, like, this is pretty fascinating. That's same, cool, right? yeah. So uh, as I'm watching, it started to dawn on me. I was like, here we are. Week after week, busting our asses with original fucking content. <laughs> and this woman is playing video games, killing us. She's just killing us with the fucking views. Yeah. So, you know, hats off to her. Yeah, she won. Ah, it's great. She won. She's lived a fuller life than I. <laughs> ever and, will. And, or us. <laughs> she's lived a fuller life than us and ever will. And uh, she's killing us with subscribers. So, you know, go, go check her out because I'm sure she's plugging us. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, nah, she's awesome, but she's fucking hard to hate. She's pretty hard to hate. She's amazing. She's, you're, you're making a real case for it, though. She definitely, I just like her now. Yeah, she definitely starts every joking. video, though, with, like, hello, grandkids. Like, I'm amazing. Like, like, she's a she, she, Is she Kane from Diablo? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> it would be very oh, painful. Batman. Yeah, very painful. <laughs> Woman Who do we have on recently that was doing... Was it James Kennedy doing fucking... I don't know. All of them <laughs> no one was doing it. Deckard Kane. Deckard Kane. Hello, stay a while and listen. Yeah. That kind of thing. Well, okay. All right, okay. let's just slow it the fuck down now. Uh, I have to say, this has been the best year of this podcast by far. We have had the best guests this year. We've had the greatest influence, uh, uh, like the best explosion of our show. Um, we've managed to like endear ourselves to even our friends who have other shows like Rocket from Russia. We appreciate Russian Tim always sitting with us. But I have to think I have to thank uh, everyone that like checks us out every week and like like sends us uh, love or likes or comments or shares or anything like that. Like like we're growing. Um, I guess if I was to get totally transparent for a second, I had a I had a conversation with someone a couple weeks ago. Uh, a very frank conversation. This person uh, is a friend of mine, um, and they said to me, uh, are you still doing that show? And I said, yes. And they said, uh, uh, don't, don't you think uh, uh, it's run its course or something? Oh. And uh, I, I actually had to uh, like pause and reflect on that for a second. And I was cause like, where's that coming from, right? Because in my heart, I'm like, well, we're not hurting anyone. We're, we're just having fun, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I thought about it, and... Uh, Rather than lashing out irrationally at this guy, I, I, I was just like, I was like, oh well, well no, uh, we're we're growing actually, like we're doing we're doing pretty well, and I think all things considered, given the number of options of shows out there, I think we're doing pretty well, all things considered. Like we're not the biggest show, but we're not the smallest show. We're also not like you know awful. I think we have a great <laughs> format, and we have good content, we have good guests, and none of that's possible without our fans. So I, I think like. You know, at the end of the year, it's only fitting. I think we just give a big shout out to our sponsors who have been giving us so much support, and our fans and our listeners who have been listening to us. So thank you guys so much for doing this. We appreciate it. I think uh, just to follow up on my friend, uh, I was gonna say, how did you respond? Like, yeah, I literally said, <laughs> I, I, I was like, I was like, well, do, do you do you think we should stop? And then and then I think he realized the gravity of what he was saying, and he was like. Oh no no no! Of course not. Like I mean, no, like, of course, do do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Dad. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, and I was like, oh, okay, well, thanks. Well, now we have permission, guys, so we can go ahead and you know, look at me. No, but like all, all things, I, his heart was in the right place. I think he just wanted to make sure uh, time equals uh, payoff, kind of thing, like that, like investment. Yeah. Yeah. I also wanted to congratulate you because yeah, it seems like it's one of the last episodes of the year. Just wanted to congratulate you because like you know, I've seen. You know, I've known you guys for a while, right. and I've seen the growth of the of the program. I've seen like the different format you introducing new options. You're definitely growing as a podcast. I also myself as a listener find out about people who I had no idea who the hell they are. Now I know about them, and that gives me like that's my educational piece because like I I've learned something new when I learned something new. That's interesting to me. So from your podcast, I learned about local people, about local you know, and it's not like because I'm stuck in my punk rock and that doesn't mean that you know there's nothing else outside of punk rock so i learned about some comedians and right uh, yeah no i hear you yeah i i think what first of all thank you so much for saying that like um Seymour and Saavedra are like such great like integral top fucking additions to the show <laughs> like 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 at one point i was like i've just i just had too much going to like do everything and like um I, I have to say like it's it's only growing because these guys are involved and because they're like making the the shit happen basically like so I, i'm i'm just grateful that we have a good crew here like i really have to say like like since the show has grown with uh c martin Savedra involved like things have never been better it's like the best it's ever been right now like this moment this episode right now it's never it's never been this good things are awesome and it's and it's really uh sweet of you to say that uh about our show because like rocket from russia being on for seven years is a fucking feat 
especially in this era of domestic <laughs> radio, terrestrial radio. <laughs> so, I, so I'm like especially impressed with what you're saying. So thank you. I appreciate oh, that. Thank but, you for uh, doing great stuff. These guys fucking deserve uh, a big hand this year, though. They, they've, uh, they've really stepped up. I, real hand. Real hand. Big time. Um, you know what, though? Much like all good things, some good things have to come to an end, and this episode is ending. So, Mr. Russian Tim... Sir, how can people follow you online if they want to do so? Uh, sure, like the biggest, the biggest uh, internet thing for me uh, where I have the Rocket from Russia stuff is uh, the, my blog, rocketfromrussia.tumblr.com. Mm -hmm. uh, I have there all the past interviews. I have all the episodes <laughs> of the show. And I also have a list of upcoming concerts in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. So it's a great place where you can go and find out the list, what's going on in the city. Very smart, very deep resource that we can check out uh mr savedra how can people follow you oh just follow me at the savedra you can read all my bullshit there <laughs> it's good going for broke do you post much bullshit lots of bullshit oh okay it's all filler. usually me complaining about sports yeah. in some fashion <laughs> interesting all filler it's good. no yeah. killer it's, it's all killer. killer it's all killer <laughs> uh mr seamart how can people follow you if they are so inclined uh if you're so foolish you can stop trying but you can definitely uh <laughs> look up the boomsday alliance on uh on uh, instagram there hats off to you for every time making that still funny and interesting every <laughs> single time that's a tough gig no then when it gets running <laughs> it's a pretty tough gig i think that's amazing definitely check out boomsday underscore alliance online it is a growing account and uh, i think people will enjoy it if you want to follow me you can do so at md underscore boomsday that's all across the board twitter facebook instagram snapchat blah, whatever uh but if you want to follow the podcast that's where the real money is if you want to go to intergalactic interviews you can follow us on itunes and stitcher and youtube and soundcloud and everywhere where fine podcasts are found except for paid sites because fuck don't do that, that. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, thanks again to our sponsors this week, Off the Rail Brewing Company and Floathouse. Make sure you go to floathouse.ca. Follow both of them as well. If you follow them, uh, let them know you came from the show because I think they'd like to hear that. Also, uh, one more time, our podcast promo code for Floathouse is II Podcast, and that gets you 20% off your next float. And if you go to Off the Rail Brewing Company, make sure you give them a like. Uh, they're awesome. The drink we are drinking today was called Checkmate, and it is fantastic. We if I tell it. them that I came to Off the Rail just because of you, would it benefit? Uh, sure, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure it would. I'm sure it would. I'm sure they'd say. <laughs> it's not gonna hurt us. I'm sure they. I'm Unless sure, you're yeah. just belligerent. I'm sure they'd like say. Uh, they'd I'm be like, a pass out yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, don't pass out. Okay. Just trash my the options of behavior in, in, a, in, a, in a beer room. Yeah. They'd, uh, they'd probably ask you like who, and you'd be Who's like, uh, <laughs> and they're like, oh yeah. Anyway, all right, all right, you fucks. Merry Christmas. Merry and, Christmas. Uh, have yourselves a happy new year. We'll see you guys in the new year. Uh, it's been awesome. See you in a bit. Boom. Thank Love you. you.